I was actually excited to get the uh, invitation to talk about Thanksgiving because it's really important, and um, especially when it comes to school and praying for people going back to school right now. And uh, I have learned in my years of life that gratefulness really changes attitudes sometimes about things. We are so quick sometimes in prayer to jump to our requests that we have before God. And I'll be honest, sometimes things are swirling so much that it's hard for me to calm down and realize all the things that I have to be thankful for. The Apostle Paul, if you know his life, he started many of his letters to the churches with some kind of thanks to God. Even in Second Thessalonians, just looking at chapter 1, he starts out saying, We ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters. Rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. He goes on a little bit later in the next chapter. But we ought always to thank God for you brothers and sisters loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. I heard a talk by John Piper once about the word ought, and of course, depending on your translation, you might see it as obligated, owing thanksgiving to God. We must give thanks. It's natural for us to give thanks. We should and are obligated to give thanks as debtors. But Piper points out that gratitude is the kind of duty that if you experience it as a burden, you haven't experienced it yet. Think about the boy who opens up a gift from his Aunt Liz, and he's, he's excited about what might be in that gift, and he opens it up, and it's a pair of socks. <laughs> and out of obligation, he might say, thanks, Aunt Liz. But then I say, wait, there's something else. Go look in the garage. And he runs out to the garage, and there's a bicycle. And he just screams with joy and comes running up, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's so much emotion in that thanksgiving. It's not a burden. Piper would go on to say, you don't know gratitude yet if this should or ought lands with you like law. You need to know God, the giver, he, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, that he knows how to give good gifts to us. Where does this gratitude come from when we look back on our lives, even in the hardest experiences, and are able to find gratitude for how good God has been to us, way better than we deserve? Some of you are familiar with Ann Voskamp's book, 1,000 Gifts. I know my mom went through that a number of years ago, and it really had an impact on her life in thinking about what does a life of gratitude look like. Before I pray, I wanted to read words from a song that has meant a lot to me for probably almost 30 years. It's a song by Billy Crockett. And it's a song called Thankful Boys and Girls. And I love this song because you can kind of see the progression of life. You know, the things when we're young, our world is a lot smaller, the things that we're thankful for. And as that gratitude deepens and grows with all of our life experiences, here are the words. Let us be thankful, boys and girls, for eyes and ears and toes and puppies with wet noses. Let us be thankful, boys and girls, for lessons we have learned and love we have not earned. Follow the beat of amazing grace. Oh, let us be thankful, boys and girls. And let us be thankful, boys and girls, for kisses on the mouth and teenage heartbeats pounding. Let us be thankful, boys and girls, for lightning in the sky and laughter in the eye. Follow the beat of amazing grace. Let us be thankful, boys and girls. And let us be thankful, boys and girls, for a little common sense and painted picket fences. Let us be thankful, boys and girls, when packing all the plans in rented moving vans. Follow the beat of amazing grace. Oh, let us be thankful, boys and girls. And let us be thankful, boys and girls, for Mendelssohn and Brahms, shadows growing longer. Let us be thankful, boys and girls, for years that slowly go, grandkids we can hold, for memories to keep, sorrow running deep. 
follow the beat of amazing grace. Oh, let us be thankful, boys and girls, for all that brought us here and all that will bring us through. The passages of life that lead to you, they lead us to you. And let us be thankful, boys and girls, when hope is not enough, that death won't bury love. Let us be thankful, boys and girls, for wine and bread and hymns. Remembering again, we follow the beat of amazing grace. Oh, let us be thankful, boys and girls. I want to be a thankful girl. Oh, let us be thankful, boys and girls. And I just want to say a prayer for us collectively. And sometimes for me, the best thing for me to do is to pray scripture back to God. Because <laughs> we can never go wrong with that. So if you wouldn't mind um, bowing with me. And I'm going to pray a prayer of thanks thankfulness. Father, I thank you for your unfailing love for us. You love the world so much that you gave Jesus. I thank you for your amazing grace and mercy and forgiving our sins while we were yet sinners. You died for us. You, you work everything for the good of those who love you and who have been called according to your purpose, which is to conform us into the image of Jesus. Thank you that you are not slow in keeping your promise. You are patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance and knowledge of you. Thank you for being with us in our trials, our troubles, in our good days. Thank you for sunrises and sunsets, for mountains, oceans, Indiana farm fields, even busy, bustling cities whose people you love so much. Thank you for the starry night sky that swallows us up in its vastness and tells us there is a creator. Thank you for your compassion when we are heartbroken. Thank you for the many different gifts and skills that you've given each of us. We who make up your body here, the church, Thank you for the knowledge that we are made in your image, O oh God. Thank you for your word that is God breathed. It's a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, a sure foundation upon which we can build our lives. Through it, your Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and teaches us truth. Your word is a treasure we can hide in our hearts. It never changes. It is always relevant. Your word will never wither, fade, or pass away. It will stand forever. Thank you for the family of God. <laughs> those here today, those not here, those around us, the mentors, the teachers, the encouragers, the ones who ask the hard questions and sit with us when sorrow is overwhelming. The dark friends of illness, loss, disability. For when life is the darkest and we are at our lowest, we can have a fellowship with you that we would never know any other way. Thank you for the gift of each day a bank account of 24 hours that we can invest or squander. Thank you for showing us the kingdom of God. It is not a matter of talk, but of power. Not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. May your kingdom be what we seek and build this day. May we never forget that which you have been and are for us, what you have given us in this life, including the hope of what is yet to come. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Thank you, Liz, for leading us in a time of Thanksgiving. You know, she's exactly right. We all kind of, um, we skip ahead, right, to the asking, and, and we like to worship and sing, which is all good, but, but God wants us to remember to give him thanks. Well, before Liz goes and finds her seat, I wanted to talk to you for a minute. Is that all right? That's perfectly fine. Okay. <laughs> she knew this was coming. <laughs> that's so. right. Thanks. That's all right, yeah. We're, we're making it look like she didn't know, but she actually does. She knows. So, you know, over the last few years when we do these prayer services, we do this every year just before school starts. We lift up our, our kids. We lift up our community. And one of the things that we do, and we're going to get, we're going to pray for our kids and pray for our local schools here in a few minutes. But it occurred to me when we were talking a few weeks ago uh, about the service that sometimes we forget about college students because <laughs> they're going back to school too. And, and really, in some ways, college students have pressures and challenges that a lot of kids that are maybe going into elementary school or high school don't have. I mean, a lot of them are moving away from family. There's different pressures, maybe financial pressures that are there that maybe you don't quite experience in the same way when you're in high school. So I, I wanted to ask you, Liz, uh, you work at IU East, and, and I thought it would be really cool to hear from you today about what are some of those pressures and what are some ways that we can be in prayer for our, our college students as they get ready to start this new school year? That's great, Danny, and thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah. Um, of course, we've been going at it all summer long, working with our new students coming in, orienting them. And it is true that, you know, they're, they're coming from high school. IU East is mainly a commuter campus, of course, but we do have students who move in. A lot of our student athletes move in and live in the apartments nearby. Mm -hmm. But I was a student who went away to college, and actually all summer long I've been telling my mom, I've been telling the story of literally sobbing on her shoulder as she mm -hmm. left me at, <laughs> at my college <laughs> way back when, and she actually looked up in her diary, and this is significant because uh, she keeps a diary, by the way, every day of her life, I think. Um, and she looked back in the fall of 1990, and what I said to her as I was sobbing on her shoulder was, and it was probably something like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't feel like I belong here. I don't think I'm going to make it. She actually, I said that to her, and she wrote it down in her diary. And of course, years later, looking back on it, I'm like, college was fantastic. It was a great time in my life. Um, but it's a transition. And I think that's the important thing. And we talk to our students all the time about, yes, there's the academic side, there's the career preparation, but there's also just the belonging. And truthfully, for those of us who've studied psychology and we understand lifespan development, you know, you're an emerging adult. You're starting to think about things at a deeper level. And truthfully, you're starting to deal with some of the hard things in your life. You know, college was the time when I really started diving into my own stuff and thinking about my nuclear family and grief and things that maybe I hadn't worked through yet. So mm -hmm. um, our students, because it's a commuter campus, you know, when you think about K-12, we have a lot of resources available for students, both, you know, for, for food, and, you know, you, you can get free meals at school and things like that. In college, that changes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, free and reduced lunch doesn't exist in college. And so my office, we're in the Office of Student Success, and we do a lot of things about addressing food insecurity. The other thing is we have a lot of regional students, so they're driving sometimes 45 minutes or an hour just to get to class. And I mean, I didn't have the most reliable car when I was 18 mm -hmm. or 19, you know? And mm -hmm. so driving through all kinds of weather to get to class, they just have a lot of extra challenges and financial burdens. And so working with our financial aid department, um, one thing I'll say, being at IU East, we actually do have quite a few Christian students who come through. And last summer I was filling in for a success coach and had a lot of appointments with incoming students. And it was amazing how many said, oh, I was involved in church or, you know, I was involved in youth group. And so being able to talk to them about where they can find support on our campus. And, and you know, I know, what is it, a week or two ago, we had somebody here from Ball State. Mm -hmm. And I know we have a fellowship of Christian athletes group on our campus. And we also have um, Campus Christian Fellowship. I'm the sponsor of that, actually. And we have several local kids who've come to IU East who've, who've taken up the leadership of that. So I think, you know, supporting our Christian kids who are there um, the amount of mental illness, you know, just, just struggle, mental health struggles that our students have is off the charts, as I know you're seeing in K-12. And um, I can't even tell you the, the amount of students coming in already with some kind of diagnosed anxiety, depression, um, you know, and, and I see it as we are, I know my brother is a teacher of high school math, and he talks about being a 
the best kingdom building math teacher that he can be. Mm. And I know with several of my Christian colleagues on campus, we talk about, um, you know, these students are coming to us. They, it's a different relationship with parents at this point. In fact, the law says that we cannot tell parents what's going on with their student if they call us, FERPA. Um, and so navigating that and being able to, you know, encourage students to talk to their parents when they're struggling, um, getting them connected to our campus counselor. Um, but the needs are huge. Yeah. And it's every day in our face. And we've already got a caseload of probably 10 students coming in that we know are going to need serious wraparound. One of them is um, McKinney Vento. Um, you're probably familiar with that, Nicole, but which is basically a homeless, home, they're homeless. They have a status from the state of Indiana. And so therefore they qualify as an independent student. And um, of course, we're gonna wrap around that student and make sure that they have what they need hmm. to be able to even just get to class. Wow, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a totally different experience there. So how do you think we could pray specifically? I mean, I, I know there's general things going on, but what could we do to, for all of us to be in prayer as you start the year. You mentioned a lot there, but. I know it's a lot. <laughs> well, and same yeah. as K-12, but pray for the people who are on the front line. Yeah. You know, yeah. my, I feel like my role now as a, as a middle manager is to support my success coaches and my student advocate and make sure that they're doing, I mean, they're struggling. I mean, I, I've had, I've got some seasoned coaches and they're coming to me saying, I've got secondary trauma from the things the student just unloaded on me, you know? And so making sure that, that they are healthy yeah. Um, but with the students, I think I know, you know, when you're at that stage in life, you're really starting to think deeply about things. So yeah. on a secular campus, for those who are followers of Jesus, our dean of students is a follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. that we can love students, pay attention, ask the right questions, and that students' hearts will be open. Because they're, even at IU East and other, you know, public colleges, there are opportunities for them to come to know Jesus. We have to be very careful how we approach that, but um, I, I can't tell you how many sacred conversations I've had where students have brought it up in front of me and I've been able to talk to them. So um, that would be my general. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. a powerful mission field because again, like you said, a lot of students in college, they're going through transitions. Mm -hmm. And I would also say too, I, I know from even my own experience, I mean, I went to a Bible college, but it was when I was in Bible college that I was actually wrestling with my faith. Mm -hmm. Like you, you would think that I would have had it all sorted out, you know, before then. Yeah. But, but you know, when you go off to college, you're figuring these things out for yourself for the first time. You don't have mom or dad or whoever raised you there every moment to kind of lead you along. I mean, I, you know, my mom and dad, you know, always made sure I got to church and things like that. You know, it's it's a much different environment when you are when you're off to college. So we really do de desperately need to be in prayer for our students in college. And there's a lot of pressures that are there. We we didn't even, I'm going to talk about it in a second, but social media yeah. and, I mean, just all that. I mean, there's just so many yeah, pressures. Yeah, the relationships are becoming more important, and yeah. parents' parents' voices are getting quieter and quieter in yeah. students' lives, and so, yeah. you know, they're making a lot of significant life decisions and career choices at that time. So they're, And it's a pressure. Even our straight-A students are under a lot of pressure yeah. with yeah. those decisions. It's, it's just a much different world, and, you know, I... Again, that's not to say that students 50 years ago didn't have their own struggles, but when you have more, in some ways, when you have more voices, uh, like I said, with social media and whatnot, it can create even more challenges. So we, we need to be in prayer for our students and also be in I want to be in prayer for you, Liz, be in prayer for all of our, you know, the administrators, teachers, support staff, everybody that's involved in our colleges, because they've, they've got a lot on, on their plate too. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's pray for them together here real quick. Let me pray over you, Liz. God, I just ask you, Father, to bless Liz. I'm so grateful that she loves you and she brings the light of Jesus into her, um, into the college here at IU East. God, I just pray you would bless her. Give her your spirit. Help her to feel your presence, God. And Father, we do pray that your spirit would just be felt, not just in IU East, but all of our college campuses. We know that as they head back here in the next few weeks, um, there's going to be challenges that are ahead, choices that have to be made. Uh, and God, we know that, that sometimes too, uh, many of those choices are, are things that, are, that exclude you. And, and so, Father, we pray that you would be a bigger part of our campuses, that our students would feel your love, that you would be with our campus ministries, whether they be Fellowship of Christian Athletes or campus houses at the various universities, Father, that they would um, just feel your presence and be able to reach into the lives of our students that go there. And, and God, I know right here in our own church we have students that are here this morning that will be heading back in the next few weeks. I just pray that you would bless them and that they would feel your presence as they go to school, that they would stay connected to you, that they would grow in faith as they grow in knowledge, 
And God, that they would know that, that you, like it says in Psalm 1, that, that the beginning of all knowledge is in you. God, help us to keep our eyes on you as we learn and as we grow. And God, I, again, I just ask for your blessing on Liz and also all those that serve our college students. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Liz, so much for all that you do. We appreciate you. Thanks for sharing it this morning as well. You know, over the years, uh, like, I, like I already mentioned, our, our back-to-school service over the years, we've, we've interviewed students, we've interviewed teachers, we've interviewed administrators. You know, I thought this year would be a good idea, though, to do something a little bit different, um, to talk to a different group within our church, or within our schools, I should say. Well, they're in our church, too. Um, that, that reach into the lives of our kids. And in many ways, it's our support staff that's in our schools that are, in many ways, can find themselves on the front line. Um, whether it's those that work in our cafeterias, those that work in our, off in our school offices, those who work um, you know, as coaches uh, for our, our sports and athletics, uh, for band, all these different groups of people that are out there. To have the support staff there is an immense blessing and impacts the lives of our kids. And so what I decided to do this week is rather than interview teachers and administrators, we've, we've heard from them over the last couple of years, I decided to sit down with a couple of special ladies in our church who I did an interview with, and I wanted to know a little bit about how we can support them, but also things that they see in kids that we could be in prayer for. And so I, I met this week with Debbie McGinley and Jan Lunsford, and I, I tried to get them to come up here on stage, but they just, they're like, I don't know about that. So they said, you know what, I'll, we'll sit down with you and we'll record. And I said, awesome, that'll work too. So uh, let's go ahead and, and here's the interview that I had with them earlier this week that should give us some insights on how we can be in prayer for our students in our schools. Hi everybody, uh, thank you for joining with me and I have a couple of wonderful guests with me uh, that, that uh, have taken some time to share with me. This is uh, Debbie McGinley, Jan Lunsford, and they are both the, the brains, the yeah. Uh, you are the ones that make things work at Lincoln High School, right? Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, so. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> I was talking with uh, my wife the other day, and she said, we all know that the secretaries <laughs> really run the school. So, okay, okay. so yeah, yeah. So we, we're, we're, we're catching on to y'all, okay? okay. We, we know what's going on. But no, uh, thank you for taking some time today. And, and I wanted to, to bring you on today. In, in the past few years, we've had teachers shared, administrators, we've had students. I thought it would be a good, good idea to talk to those who are part of our support staff. Um, so I know that represents a lot of different people, not mm -hmm. just the office staff, but it also represents custodians, bus drivers, uh, cafeteria workers. Um, and, and so I, I think it's important to hear from you because you see things in different ways that maybe teachers and administrators would. It takes a village. It really does. It, yeah, you're exactly right. It takes everybody. It takes everybody. Um, so my first question is, from your perspective, what is it that you um, see students going through? What are some different things that they're going through that you think we should be in prayer for for our kids? Um, they've got a lot of pressures, a lot of things going on in life. Yeah. Um, what are some things that you've noticed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. I just pray that the students know that we're there for them um, to help them grow and to be patient with us, whether they want to hear it or not, you know, that's, that's important. I think sometimes they look at us as the bad guys and we're there to help. Yeah, you're there to support them and encourage them to make good choices so they Absolutely. can be successful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What do you think, Jan? I agree. I think kids need to know that everybody in that building cares for them yeah. a lot, probably more than what the kids realize. And um, I think our big goal is kids nowadays, they need to learn how to handle conflict, not run away from it. And I know that's a big goal at school, but something we're trying to get them to see, mm -hmm. to be like to own up to things, handle conflicts and, mm -hmm. and deal with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and so, um, both of you have been doing this for a little while. So mm -hmm. what are what are some, some things that you think have changed? I, I know this is, I'm kind of asking you a question off the fly here, but, yeah. but what is something that, that you've seen that's changed in the last maybe five or 10 years? I mean. Technology. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought that was the <laughs> social yeah. media. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. exactly. It's it's changed dynamics mm -hmm. of kids relating to each other and other people and technology's good, but yet it can be bad. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we we see a lot of that. And kids are hooked on their phones and. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, not just kids, yeah. <laughs> adults too. I think, yeah, yeah. it's. Yeah, I, I can imagine it's really changed the way kids interact with each other. Because mm -hmm. before, when you wanted to talk about or talk to somebody or whatever, you had to do it kind of face to face. Yeah. You know, yeah. now it's you can go online and say things. That creates a whole mm -hmm. avenue of, of problems mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah. So, so we definitely need to be praying for our kids and technology. Yeah. Um, families, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of, uh, what I've seen is there's a lot of family, uh, I hate to use the word dysfunction, but yeah. but, there, but that's what it is. And mm -hmm. um, we need to be in prayer for families as well to, to be there and be more supportive, I think. Absolutely. So, you know. Some of the things we see and hear, you know, it, it really breaks your heart, but that's where we're at right now. So we have to help with it any way we can. Yeah. So um, the role that you have is an important one. And so the other question I wanted to ask you is how can we as a, as a church and even as a community, how can we be praying for you ladies that are up in you know, the front office? How do we pray for our cafeteria people? What, what are some things that we can be in prayer for? I think patience is a big one. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a dangerous it, prayer, but it's an important one. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's easy to lose your patience, you know, but um, if we could yeah, get prayers for that, I think that, that is important. Show the schools some grace. I mean, it's really hectic in the beginning of the school year, and there's going to be glitches and little things come up, but show us some grace. We're trying, you know, trying hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's just frustrating when you feel like people are, not patient with you or not mm. you know just getting angry too quickly and stuff it's yeah. like you know we're trying yeah yeah I, one of the things that i would i would guess with your role is uh you kind of wear a lot of different hats um yeah there's maybe the main part of your job but there's other things you know you have kids come in the office and so you kind of got to put on the unofficial counselor hat you know <laughs> yeah. and and uh you know and then you have parents or whatever and so um, I'm sure it's it's pretty tricky <laughs> at times, but it's a blessing, I'm sure, as well, to be it able to, mm -hmm. to connect it with is. kids. Um, and it, it's a lot of fun. You know, I don't want to sound negative, but no. because it is fun. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the kids coming in. And honestly, I enjoy talking to the parents, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I like to give the kids a hard time. And <laughs> some kids it's hard to tease with because they just don't have that interaction yeah. you know they don't have that dynamic in their mm -hmm. family or whatever yeah. so here's someone in the office you know trying to tease with you they don't they're looking at you like what yeah <laughs> how to take it you know but yeah. you know we want to change that around and let yeah. them know that you know the school's a family and mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah well i'm grateful for both of you um i know that your love for our kids our community it's it's right there and we're just very thankful for both of you and, and I'm thankful for all of our um, support staff I think sometimes mm -hmm. unfortunately uh, you know we talk about teachers and administrators and all that but but if we didn't have support staff other things could not happen That's so right. That's right. so yeah. I'm, I'm very very thankful for both of you and all of our staff and in, in our schools and and that's not just at our school I know there's there's other schools around us so we're very thankful for them and for you all and and just keep at it. And if there's anything we can do to support you, but we will definitely be in prayer for you. Thank you. And, thank um, you. and thank you both for taking a few minutes and sharing with us today. Yeah. I really do appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Dan, for sharing with us. That was very insightful. You know, their role and what they do in our schools is important. So we definitely need to be in prayer for our support staff as well as our teachers and administrators. Now, some of you might be asking today, you know, we do this every year. Why do we have a special prayer service um, for back to school? And, and it's really not just about back to school. It's this time of year as we're coming off the summer, heading into the fall. It's kind of a, a period of new beginnings for all of us in some ways as we enter into the fall. And, and we think it's important. We, we do two or three prayer services a year because 
The fact is, as I believe, and I've talked with some other pastor friends, there's not enough prayer, not just individually throughout the week in our lives, but there's not even enough prayer, I think, in our worship services. Because prayer is the power that God works through to enable change and to bring change into the different places. And we all know whether we see things on the news, whether we hear it through, through media or social media or whatever, that our schools need prayer. There's a lot of things that are happening in our schools and our kids are being confronted with challenges. Our, and then because of the challenges that our students are facing, our teachers and our administrators are facing challenges that are, that are really uh, new in, in history in many ways. So we need to be in prayer for them because we know that our kids are our future. Our kids are what are, who are going to be leading us in the next 20, 30, 50 years. And we need to lift them up in prayer. We need to show them the support and the love that they need as they go through this. With, you know, I can remember back when I was in, in middle and high school, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it was hard, and I can't even imagine now how much harder it is. Also, but, so what we're going to do here in, a, in the next couple of minutes, is I'm going to invite anybody that is a support staff member, a teacher, an administrator within our schools. You know, our schools, uh, we really have a lot of representation in our church now when it comes to schools. Things have changed in the last 10 years in the way that people attend school in our areas. And I was kind of looking back through some things, and I, and I might have missed, but, but I, want to, I want everybody to know that we're not just praying for Western Wayne schools. Uh, when we're praying for local schools. As a matter of fact, in our, in our church today, we have students who attend Tri High School, we have students who attend Centerville Schools, Hagerstown, Fayette County, and Richmond. We have representatives, we have students who attend all of those different districts. And so I just want to say today that we're also in prayer as well for our, our surrounding school districts because all of them are facing very similar challenges. Uh, to, as to what uh, was described also in the video and what I've described to you today. So we want to lift them up in prayer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, if, if, you're, if you want to, I know coming up front might be a little tricky, right? Right, Debbie and Jan? A little tricky, right? Okay, um, it, it's a little tricky to come up front, but if you'd like to come up, come up here. We're going to surround you in prayer, and then here in a minute, we're going to invite our students in to pray as well. So why don't you come on up? Why don't we all stand, right? We're all going to stand. That way we don't feel maybe uh, quite as odd if we come up front to pray. So if you are a teacher, an administrator, a support staff member, would you come up first? And then we're going to circle around them in prayer. All right. Do they have any takers? All right. I see a couple people coming. All right. Here we go. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. As you see, we have quite a few in our, in our church family that are involved in our schools in some way. I mean, they're involved in different ways, which is really cool, too. Some of them are more on the, the administrative, the teaching side. Um, so we're just very, very grateful for each of them. So let's lift them up in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for those who have heard your call to teach and impact our students. God, we know that they have a lot of challenges. And, and Father, we're grateful that these teachers and administrators and the support staff that's here, God, that, that they are um, they're right there in the trenches, God. I know that, like was mentioned in the video, it's hard to be patient sometimes. It's hard to, to maybe understand where a student's coming from when they make a decision or a choice. God, I pray that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them discernment so that they would know how to best react, that your Holy Spirit in their life, that he would move and give them just give them an insight that maybe they don't have themselves that can minister directly into the heart of the student that they are working with, that student that, student that they're impacting. God, give them strength and perseverance. The school year can be long, um, and, and as you go off and you start the first week, it, it can be like, oh my goodness, we've got 180 days ahead of us, and it, it can be a lot, God. I just pray that you would just give them that extra energy, that extra joy, in their work, God, that they would just feel that and, and, and just, just put that into the kids that they're with. And God, um, I, I just pray for safety. You know, sometimes our schools, we've seen a lot of just things in our, in our country that have just been awful when it comes to safety. God, I just pray that our schools would have a safe year. Um, Father, that they would, um, that they would, that you would keep the evil forces, those things that would seek to impact our schools away. And then, Father, we, we just, we do pray for um, just, 
you know, just the overall environment and the feel within our schools, God, that our, that our students would feel loved and that they would feel like it's a place where they can learn. God, I just pray that you would help each one that's here today and those that are in our schools that are not here today to, to help add to that feeling and that culture um, within the school, God. I'm so grateful indeed for all of uh, our, our teachers, administrators, support staff. Father, may your blessing and may your spirit come do down on them now. And Father, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you all to just stay here for a second because what we're also going to do is we're going to invite our kids in. Okay? Because honestly, the reason why we, we the, the, the major impetus right behind a prayer service is that we're praying for our kids. Our kids have a lot in front of them. There's a lot of things that are going on. And, and so I want to lift them up in prayer, and I want them to know. I want our kids to know that we're praying for them, too. You guys ready for school? Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought there might be some mixed reactions. There. I bet you if I asked some of the teachers, we might have some mixed reactions, too. But, hey, that's understandable because you've had a great summer, right? No. No? Yes, you have. I know you have. You've done a lot of fun stuff this summer. But, hey, you've got to get back to school and grow and learn, right? So we want to pray for you guys, our church family. We're gonna, I'm going to pray over you because we want you all to have a great and successful year. And we want you to feel God's love and we want you to feel his, just his arms wrapped around you. So why don't we all pray and ask him to do that, okay? Let's pray. God, we thank you for our kids here today. God, I just pray that you would bless them. God, I know that, that while uh, summer is a lot of fun and sometimes it can be hard to go back to school, I, I, I think they know deep down that it's important for them to learn and to grow. And God, just help them to have that heart and that, that feeling this year as they enter into a school year, that they would grow academically, that they would grow as people, and really even as they go through the school year, God, that they would grow closer to you, that they would grow cro closer to your love and your mercy. And, and God, I just pray that you would protect them, that you would give them your, um, your spirit, just that they would feel you as they go into the school each day, God, that they would be ready to to learn and to, to love other students that they go to school with like you love them too. So Father, I pray for your spirit to come down on them and in our schools this year. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. 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 All right. Thanks for joining us for a few minutes, guys. You guys can go back to your seats as well. And Travis is going to lead us in one final song of worship and prayer today. And again, you know, as we've seen today, prayer you know, we've prayed for our students, we prayed for our teachers, but one of the things is to think, all right, well, we did our prayer service, you know. We, listen, this, like anything, you, prayer in many ways is a battle. This is a great battle that's going on within many of our schools, and we need to be warriors for our students in prayer, and so I want to encourage you to do that. And of course, there's another component to this that I haven't touched on a lot, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on but the impact of schools within our communities. Schools are important within our communities. That's why we have this prayer service, because I know many of you, as I look across the room, many of you are thinking, well, I don't, I don't have kids in schools. Let me tell you, what's going on in our schools still impacts you, okay? So it is so important for you to also be in prayer for our kids and for, for all of our leaders here locally and regionally and even state and nationally and around the world, right? So I want to encourage you to take what we've talked about today, take it into your prayer lives individually, and allow God to move through your prayers so that God can change and impact our schools.